Hi everyone, this is Dr. Divya Dessa. Welcome to AIDS Anatomy. I am here to make learning anatomy super easy, fun, exciting and unforgettable. So let's dive into today's topic, Brachial Plexus. Brachial Plexus seems a little daunting especially for first years when they begin with anatomy. Today I will make it so simple and easy for you that you will find it so hard to forget. Now let's understand what do we mean by brachial plexus. Brachium means arm and plexus means a network. So brachial plexus is a plexus of nerves which are formed by the anterior or ventral rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 spinal nerves. Sometimes they may receive a contribution from C4 or T2. So if it receives a contribution from C4, we call it as prefix brachial plexus and if it receives a contribution from T2, we call it as postfixed brachial plexus. Now let's see where these brachial plexus are located. The brachial plexus have got four components, roots, trunks, divisions and cords. So each of these components, they are located in different locations. So the roots, we see it in the neck. So they lie deep to the scalenous anterior muscle. The trunks, they lie in the neck itself, but between the scalenous anterior and scalenous medius muscle. The divisions, they lie behind the clavicle and the cords, we see them in the axilla region. In the axilla, the cords lie in relation to the axillary artery. So we have three cords, medial, lateral and posterior. So the medial cord lies medial to the axillary artery, lateral cord lies lateral to the axillary artery and posterior cord lies posterior to the axillary artery. To understand the brachial plexus in a simple way, let's take the analogy of a tree. The tree has roots, it has trunk, it has branches and sub-branches. The same way, here the brachial plexus has roots, the trunk, the divisions, the cords. So the divisions and cords are like the branches of the tree. Thus the brachial plexus has got four components, the roots, trunks, divisions and cords and the cords give the branches which supply the arm and the forearm and the hand. The entire upper limb is supplied by the branches of these cords. So now we will understand these components in a very simple way. Now let me break down the brachial plexus step by step so that it is simple and easy for you to understand. So first is the roots. So the ventral rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1, they contribute to the formation of the brachial plexus. So these are the roots. When it receives a contribution from C4, we call it as the prefix brachial plexus and if it receives a contribution from T2, we call it as postfix brachial plexus. From the roots, we have the trunks. The ventral rami of C5 and C6 joins to form the upper trunk. The C7 ventral rami continues as middle trunk. The ventral rami of C8 and T1, they join to form the lower trunk. So these are the three trunks of the brachial plexus, upper, middle and lower. Now these trunks divide to form the divisions. So each of these trunks forms two divisions, anterior and posterior. So the green here is the anterior and the purple represents the posterior divisions. So from the divisions we have the cords. The anterior division of upper and middle trunk join to form the lateral cord the anterior division of lower trunk continues as medial cord and the posterior divisions of all the three trunks, they join to form the posterior cord. So these are the three cords of the brachial plexus. Now let's see the branches. So branches we will see from the roots. So from the roots, C5 will uh, we'll have the dorsal scapular nerve. Then from C5, C6 and C7, we have the long thoracic nerve. Among the trunk, only the upper trunk gives the branches that is suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius. The middle and lower trunk do not give any branches. The divisions also do not form any branches. Now to see the branches from the cords. 
first is the lateral cord lateral cord gives three branches lateral pectoral nerve musculocutaneous nerve and the lateral root of median to remember this three branches you can remember the mnemonic let me laugh so each the first letter stands for each of the nerve from the posterior cord we have five branches upper subscapular lower subscapular nerve nerve to latissimus dorsi the axillary nerve and the radial nerve and to remember this you can remember the mnemonic ulnar next is medial from the medial cord we have five branches medial pectoral nerve medial cutaneous nerve of arm medial cutaneous nerve of forearm medial root of median and the ulnar nerve the lateral root of median and the medial root of median join to form the median nerve thus we have all the nerves which supply the upper limb whenever you try to recollect the brachial plexus remember the analogy of the tree just like the tree has roots trunk main branches and the smaller branches we have the roots trunk divisions and the cords of brachial plexus now let's try to recall the branches of the brachial plexus so branches from the roots are dorsal scapular nerve and long thoracic nerve you can remember it as long d branches of the upper trunk are suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius remember it as 2s and branches of lateral cord we have lateral pectoral nerve musculocutaneous nerve and lateral root of median nerve let me laugh branches of medial cord are m for u the mnemonic is m for u medial pectoral nerve medial cutaneous nerve form medial cutaneous nerve forearm medial root of median nerve and ulnar nerve and branches of the posterior cord are upper subscapular lower subscapular nerve nerve to latissimus dorsi axillary nerve and radial nerve the mnemonic is ulnar and that's a wrap for today's episode of brachial plexus if you have any difficult topics you can leave it in the chat box so that i can make it simpler for you in the coming episodes if you found today's video helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends hit the subscribe so that you stay connected with is anatomy and ring the bell so that you're the first one to know when i decode another fascinating topic keep learning stay curious and never stop exploring the wonders of anatomy until then next time